So my full name when I was born was Valerie Joanne Bowling. And then now it's Valerie Gibbs or Val Gibbs is what people um, call me. But I don't know where Valerie came from. <laughs> so about, that's my story, you know? How about Joanne? Oh, Joanne, sorry, that's right, you're right. Joanne came from my mom, you know, Joanne, Edith, Chastain, Bowling. I was born in Mobile, Alabama on October 17, 1956, about four o'clock in the morning at Providence Hospital. Yeah, so they were probably happy to see me <laughs> come around. <laughs> well, I was about four years old and up. Um, so it was the earliest. And, and the reason I know four is because that's when we moved up to Massachusetts from Mobile. And I really don't have that many, um, I have some choppy memories of Mobile, but not really anything with um, mom and dad in them that much. I mean, so when we moved up to Massachusetts, kind of my earliest memories of, um, of uh, mom was just, you know, being in the house with her, um, I, and just, you know, her being a mom, because she had four kids at the time, and, um, you know, just doing chores around or playing in our rooms or doing stuff like that. And, and probably with dad, it was always felt more outside, like we're always outside with dad, <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, great. Uh, no, playing, uh, playing games, riding bikes. Was, I think it was mom and dad that both taught me how to ride a bike. Um, without any brakes. Thank goodness we had it at the bottom of the hill. There was a cross street that was flat and I learned how to ride a bike. And apparently when you're four years old and riding a bike at that time, it was a big deal. I was a prodigy for the bowling family at that time, the earliest kid to ride a bike. And then my earliest memory of that, and this is not really mom and dad, but with uh, y'all, um, Angie and Kiri, who are my older brother and sister, you, Kiri, who was two years older than me and Angie was four years older. After I learned how to ride a bike, I think mom and dad went back up to the house to, you know, get dinner ready or do whatever. And that's when y'all said, hey, you want to go down the hill on the bike? <laughs> and it didn't have any brakes. And I ended up in Priscilla. What was miss We were just talking about it today. I ended up in their front flower bed. I remember that. <laughs> And, and then it was a long time before I had another bike memory. So until I, I finally got, uh, I think it was seven or eight. It was a huffy English racer, I believe, black with white fence. But it rained that day, that birthday. But we had that little, um, one as a breezeway that was probably only about 10 feet long. And I was just determined. I remember I rode that bike like one half of a pedal, you know. And then I'd break, and I'd ride it, turn it around and ride it back all day long on my birthday. As I started kindergarten there, I couldn't have started when I was four years old if I had still lived in Mobile. So I had to take a test to get into kindergarten. Um, but thank goodness I had smart older brothers and sisters, and so I caught on from you guys and I passed the test. My biggest fear was not being able to tell a lion from a tiger. I remember that. <laughs> Funny. Uh, but dad's uh, memories were, um, you know, like I said, being outside, um, you know, I don't know, uh, playing with them, uh, you know, the toboggan runs. He used to come in when it was snowed, he'd dig all the toboggans and he'd get us to do the toboggans downstairs. I remember he'd want to play with the boy, y'all, the two boys outside, or we'd mow lawns or do something, and I kind of, I was a tomboy. So I would always ask dad, hey, can I take off my shirt too? And I think he left me and mom was just like, you put your shirt back on. I was probably five years old, you know. It wasn't done, apparently. And I do remember dad taking me to work one day. I was probably like six or seven, because we moved back when I was in third grade, into third grade. So however old you are at that time. And, um, but he had said, you know, I think maybe he was taking all the kids in. I was probably six or seven years old. And it's like, come on, go in. And his office was at Fenway. I didn't think anything of it until I was probably about 40 something years old. And somebody asked me, you know, where, where, where was your dad's office? I was like, oh, Fenway Park, you know, which I was like, well, that was pretty cool. I didn't realize it. But anyway, I went there and dad is in his office and, you know, he doesn't know what to do with me. And his secretary wasn't there at that time. And so he's like, just, um, you know, just here, she's got a typewriter, just sit at her desk and act like you're the secretary. So I remember I'd like typed like five things and I, I guess all the typewriter uh, 
things got stuck. And so the typewriter stuck and I thought I'd broken it. So every time Dad would walk out, I'd just like act like I was <laughs> Never told him. <laughs> I'm sure that poor secretary would like pull all that stuff apart the next day or whenever she got back to the office. I'm like, uh-oh. You know, so I'd always act like I was doing something. Oh, I'm answering the phone now. <laughs> he, he probably knew, but anyway. Do you have any other memories of uh, being in uh, Massachusetts or that you can recall? Yeah, you know, just, a, you know, regular growing up stuff and then um, coming down, I, the, the odd things, and I did, we didn't think of anything was odd, you know, you never do when you're a kid, but several odd things I thought were just unusual. I so I remember asking, because we were in, the town had so many Jewish people in it, we were Catholic, and I mean, you know, most of the kids I went to school with were all, um, a lot were Jewish, and I just thought it was so cool that they had these candles. That's the first time I found out of a menorah and how they got, you know, like we only have one day of Christmas and they have 10. What's this about? <laughs> that was in the Life's Unfair, you know? <laughs> so I first found out about that. So I thought that was, uh, those were these revelations, I guess. You know, when you're a kid, you're like, what is that? You know, and so you learn about that. The other th memories I had was just, uh, like I said, I was uh, skating around the pond when I was, you know, we were kids, or the swamp. It was really a swamp. You had to walk out, but it froze over, and so you get your ice skates. I don't think I ever lost my accent. So when we moved up to Massachusetts, I remember, gosh, what was the little girl, Kathy? Something, anyway, a couple of, uh, doesn't really matter. A couple of doors down, her mother thought my name was Vile. <laughs> Thought that was kind of a strange name. Anyway, <laughs> that's how I pronounce it. But I don't think I, I don't think I really got much of an accent being up there. Uh, maybe I got rid of a little bit of southern accent coming back. And I didn't think anything of it. But I still remember mom, you know, checking us out of school because we went to public school up there. And when spring training came along, and dad would have to go down to Florida, and she'd pack us all up. Like those two years, we check in to get school uniforms and check into a new school for like the last six weeks and and thank goodness we had brothers and sisters because we all kind of buddied together because I don't remember ever really you know meeting any new friends um, but it was cool because we always stayed in a motel and the big thing was is what pool you were going to have and had to have a diving board and a sliding board a slide to go down um, so you could have a bunch of fun then um, yeah but I, th I just remember that and there were t and it was interesting because I remember mom asking you know, what did you learn in school and this was I guess in first grade maybe when we were there and we had only been learning Massachusetts you know our tables you know one plus two three um, but I remember I said well they were doing something called carrying numbers you know when you had like 27 and 35 um, so that was interesting you know I was like so I had to learn that you know get to know that real quick uh, but I do remember this about mom. Mom told me um, I was always a horrible speller, horrible. And mom swore it was because I didn't take phonics, um, because I missed it going back and forth through so, between uh, moving from Massachusetts to Mobile and um, around. And I think maybe I had like six weeks of phonics, but it was like, I never understood what phonics had to do with spelling. <laughs> I just she didn't think she wanted me to admit I'm just a terrible speller. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was just life. Anyway, so those are my memories. Oh yeah, well, I remember our trip out west, and I just remember we were all, oh, and then every um, every Christmas coming down to uh, stay with uh, to Mobile, you know, and have Christmas down there, and I, you know, being in Nanny and Papa's house with one bathroom and all of us there, and um, but it was always fun. We didn't think, I mean, one bathroom was one bathroom, you know, you didn't think of being deprived it was just waiting in line you know and then the other part of it that I still remember one time I was always so scared of Santa Claus and they had us back out on that sleeping porch because they were doing the Chris Christmas Eve they were putting together the Christmas you know stuff and I woke up and I had to go to the bathroom and I thought if I see Santa Claus remember how they used to say if you had see Santa Claus he's not coming don't you remember that's what you know so it's like like I had to go to the bathroom so bad, and I started yelling like, "Help!" You know, help. but it took him a long time because at first it was just you know a little bit, and then finally they came like, "I've got to go to the bathroom, but I'm scared Santa Claus is out there, and I don't know what to do." Anyway.
So I got to go to the bathroom, Santa Claus came, and the, and Christmas morning came too for everybody. It was all good. It was all good. <laughs> yeah, when we moved, I don't remember mom and dad every time. It's like, or they're just like, hey, we're, we're going to Mobile. That's where you, yeah, that was your next thing that you did. And um, there wasn't a bunch to do about it. Um, but I do remember um, my first day at St. Pius, and I, you know, you're in uniforms and we're out playing, and that's when you had bean bags and stuff. And so Linda Degna and a bunch of people were like, oh, come play with this. And um, I remember like hurling that bean bag, and this is how Linda and I got to be friends. <laughs> Hit her and I gave her a black eye. Like the first time there. Like, uh, and then of course all the friends are around her are crying, like looking at me, like, oh you, you you evil, tall, weird girl that came here from, you know, another planet. So anyway. <laughs> but it all went and on the next day everything was fine. We had some epic water battles. The time. one on Thornhill Drive. Oh Talk my gosh. That. Oh, so we lived in that. It was a three-bedroom, two-bath, one-story rental, rental house. And um, for some reason, Dad was washing the car, I think, that day and started. And we were all washing the car, probably started spraying us. And it turned into this epic water fight because I remember both Reggie and Randy Copeland were in on it. Angie wasn't because she was probably, you know, a little too old for that. But you... I guess Rick, I know uh, me, I don't remember what other kids were in there, but um, it was all the kids against dad, and he would like take a bucket and fill it up with water and then just throw it, you know, and you're so little, you'll be like, <laughs> fall back in the grass. And I think, if memory serves me right, he came in through the back door with the water hose, you know how you could cut off like this, and went in out through the front door and started spraying it. Said, if I, do I, is my memory right on that? That could be. I remember something like that. Like you had a bucket of water or something. You went come through the house. Yes, I know. And I can just remember like mom yelling like, no. <laughs> but it seemed like it lasted forever. And I had really long hair. And it was got so tangled up from getting so much water. It took me like days to get all the tangles out of my hair. I do remember that. But yeah, and it's still, it was in the water, then the yard was, God, it seemed like it was like this high. And I used to nickname myself, which you probably didn't know this, um, Dad's Only Son, even though he had two boys. Because at that time, you guys, when, we, when I was like, particularly in elementary school, which was through eighth grade, right? We didn't have junior high or anything like that. Um, it, it was through uh, grammar school and even into high school. I love to play athletics, first of all, so I always like to play basketball and volleyball and tra do track and um, where we just, well, you wouldn't call it track, we just called it running and jumping at that time, <laughs> and that's what you did. Um, and that, so, um, and Dad and I would do a bunch of that stuff, and I played basketball in the backyard with the guys, with you and Reggie and Dad all the time, and I loved to play that and ping pong, and then I really liked um, pro football when the Miami Dolphins are really big, and Dad and I would watch the the Dolphins play like almost every Sunday when they were on. That was when Bob Greasy, Larry Zonka, Mercury Morris, you know, that whole thing, you know, and I, so I would always, that's why I kind of came up with that saying was because I was the only, you know, it was just Dad and I, and we'd watch those, uh, you know, watch those football games and <laughs> I don't know, have fun. <laughs> and then um, I liked the Cincinnati Reds too, because that's when Sparky Anderson was there and I had the biggest crush on Johnny Bench, you know, and Dad actually got me an 8x10 glossy of Johnny Bench signed by him, I, who knows where it is now. And I was like, oh. and then I found out he married a Playboy, but oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't touch that. Um, a Playboy bunny, I was like, oh, what kind of man is he? <laughs> <laughs> Filthy guy. <laughs> like during the summertime we were out of school, the whole family would go in a lot of them. And then he would always do, you know, Dad was always about a game. You know, it's like, okay, let's to change things up, you know, that's what he did. It was a lot of fun um, and thought about different things. So you remember he would say, okay, now the two oldest are going. I don't know if he ever did the two oldest, but he'd do like, the girls are going, the boys are going, um, you know, whoever. So, you know, I'm just going to take Val or, you know, do this. And I we don't remember the ones where we just did something, uh, you know, where I just went with him, you know, that much. But I do remember the one that went on with Angie. And so I was probably... 10 and she was 14 years. She was at that pre-teen age where she was just embarrassed by me all the time. <laughs> We'd always stay like at a Holiday Inn and Dad would actually, um, or someplace like that, some motels, because that's all they had back then too, you know, those smaller towns. 
but you know, um, Dad would leave us because we wouldn't go to the, we rarely go to the games with them because we were just a distraction if they were there. And um, so he'd leave us at the, um, leave us at the motel. Like during the day he would, and we'd sit by, you know, you'd be by the pool all the time playing, so everything was fine. But then even it's lots of times if we had an evening game, I remember this one time, and Angie and I had kind of uh, outfits that looked like she, of course, had the more adult one, and I had like a light blue jumper, and she had like a light blue skirt and stuff. And so, if whenever Angie wore that, I'd wear my little jumper. <laughs> so, Dad said, "Okay, y'all need to go and eat at the restaurant in the Holiday Inn." So we're okay. We go to the restaurant to eat in the Holiday Inn. And she was just embarrassed by everything that I did. So I still remember she was like, stop that, stop that. So I would like, want to play seafood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was just starting to be the, you know. I, so the more she said, stop doing something, the more I would do it and just got really <laughs> embarrassed. So finally we got up to leave. And I always like to get like for dessert, instead of having a dessert, like the lifesavers or something. And I remember going, oh, those are really good lifesavers. And it was Rolaids. <laughs> Anyway, that was a treat when I put one of those in. So uh, anyway, but that was that was fun. We had a good time together. Angie and I always got along, except when um, I was when she started getting into high school and I was four years younger. There was that embarrassment gap, you know, of being a preteen teen. And then when well, she was four years older, but I was she was a senior when I was a freshman. You were a junior in high school. And so that was, uh, I got back in her good graces about the time I became a freshman and she was a senior, uh -huh. you know, so yeah. that was good. Wasn't there something about you on a... Uh, oh gosh, we don't want to end on that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I ran the ski do up the side of the boat, and all, is dad, that all dad could think about is, oh my God, we're going to get sued. <laughs> Where did that happen? Where was that? It was Rick and my mom and dad. Uh, and uh, in someplace in Florida, it was someplace in Florida. We were on a, Deb was on a trip down there and we went and you know, we never did that kind of stuff because that was a little extravagant for us, you know, so, um, but I remember we rented a ski do and Dad's like, okay, and but, so it took a while. I mean, that was when they first came out and there was like one thing you could hit out there and it was a boat anchored up <laughs> and I went up the side of it, back down, fell off. Dad was, I mean, he did ran out and like picked me up out of the water. He was so scared I was hurt. And then when he found out I wasn't, I still remember him going, I t you know, I could hear him talking to mom, oh my God, we're going to get sued. We're going to, how much is this going to cost? You know, it was a worry ward. That was a worry ward. <laughs> now, I think we escaped, you know, fine. I don't know. I never, he, the good thing was he never said anything else to me about it, you know, which was nice. He just kept saying, I'm glad you're not hurt. So, you know, if he did have to, pay for some boat damage, I don't know. <laughs> and he never ever mentioned it to me again. <laughs> That's right. How was it growing up in, for you in Mobile with our dad and mm -hmm. our Uncle Frank, both being, having been professional baseball players? Did you feel like people were kind of knew you or knew your family or they had different expectations for you or about you or you had to kind of watch what you were doing because mm, no you... i never i never felt that way um i always felt and i just maybe i was just too busy doing other things i just never felt that way but i do remember this um is uh, when we were growing up probably in grammar school and high school mom was always great we could always remember we could always invite anybody over like friday or saturday night you know, oh, and you wouldn't even ask lots of times, like, hey, I invited Linda over to spend the night. You know, you always went and spent the night at people's house back then. I don't know if people still do that. I didn't have kids, so I don't know. Um, but, you know, you'd go over to somebody's house one night, and then the next night they'd um, spend the night with you. Um, but, you know, we always were able to do that. And both, maybe because our house was a little bit bigger, too, because when we moved in over on Fountain Blue, it was a little bit bigger. And you always had, you know, kids spending the night. And then remember on Saturday mornings, it's probably Saturday mornings because Sunday you'd have to go to church, right? Um, but, but we always had a ton of cereal and uh, milk. And we'd always, get, you know, you get that out. And that's what everybody ate. And everybody was in awe of how much cereal we had in the, <laughs> in the cabinet. <laughs> because it was easy to get to do. Um, but I do remember Cup Debbie Rim told me that she ran away from home twice and came to our house. I thought she just came to spend the night. I didn't know she was, <laughs> she told me that a couple of years ago. She goes, well, you know, I ran away from home twice and uh, went over to your house 
and was like, oh, really? I mean, you know, she's like, I'm sure your mom just called mine and said, you know, because it was a whole block away, you know, Debbie's over here because maybe she'd have a fuss with her mom or something like that. And then um, I remember Linda Degnan, something went on with their family one time and um, were like, just come on over. And that, I guess the point of that too is they always felt comfortable about being, all, the, all of our friends always felt comfortable about being in mom and dad's presence. Not that they acted like they were their friends, but they were always really welcome. And what I didn't um, didn't realize until later on in life, like Fran, who was my best friend in high school, her daddy died when she was in eighth grade. And she would always come over and she said it was so nice because your dad was always so nice to me. And, the, um, and she was only alone with her mom at her house. And so it was such a happy place to be for her. I mean, I thought she had a cool thing because she had her own room, her own bathroom, <laughs> and could have a dog. You know, it's like, hey, you have it made. So it just to kind of, it always depends on your perspective, but everybody always felt welcome. And then lots of times dad would get us to play games with everybody, you know. Um, and, you know, mom would always play, you know, partake in the games lots of times too. I hated this game because I was no good at it. You'd have a broomstick and a piece of hose yeah. and hit, they'd pitch that and you'd try to hit that because he didn't want it to go very far. And then you play with wiffle balls lots of times. Mm -hmm. And then he taught you how to pole vault in the backyard when you broke your arm. <laughs> yes. And dislocated your elbow or in the hospital for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and we couldn't, Rick and I couldn't come see you. When I was 17, I was still in high school. That was when he was scouting the International League, and he had a trip to Caracas, uh, the, the Caracas, Venezuela, the Paffins. You remember the mm -hmm. uh, the Paffins, Willie, the, Willie Paffin, who was a scout down there for Dad. But he also uh, worked with uh, Seagrams or something like that. That was his main job. He and his family they did really well, and to Puerto Rico, um, San Juan. So we went down there. I was 17. I remember because he took me to a casino, and I wasn't of age. When that was a go in those casinos, they didn't let you drink. This was in San Juan, and we were staying out at the, the Hotel Caribe. The first thing that happened is we walked in, and um, Yogi Berra was walking out. Yeah, and so I met Yogi Berra, and Dad knew him, and I, I chatted, and Mom had given me this travel log, travel diary, right, to write things down, but I'm not really good at doing that, and I just don't entertain me that much. <laughs> I, was, I remember I wrote down, I met Yogi Bear. <laughs> Anyway, I met him. So I met him, um, and um, then we went up to uh, went up to the casino. When I, and you had to wear like a long dress and a suit, and they didn't have drinks, but they had but they had trays of cigarettes. You know, it's like if you wanted like a pack of cigarettes to keep you there. And so I was always Dad always thought I was a good card player and lucky at blackjack. And he's like, "Come on, I'll stake you at blackjack." But I was walking by, and one of the workers was like, said something. Um, and broken English, like, are you sure you're 18? And I was so, I was so scared the rest of the time. I was like, no, I don't want to play. I don't want to play. <laughs> I thought they were going to come and arrest me. No, mom and dad were just a lot of fun. I had a great, we had a great childhood and a great adulthood too.